Hello, Comeback Nation. Barry Madridi here back with another episode of the Comeback Game podcast. Today, I'm blessed to have Damon Burton on the line from SEO National. How you doing, mate? Hey, good, Barry. It's good to chat with you again. Yeah, you too. Where are you calling in from today for the viewers and listeners? Uh, I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah, about 20 minutes north of that. So if, if you're not familiar with uh, kind of Utah, it's where the claim to fame is there's a there's a whole bunch of Mormons here. If you're into religion, you can follow that. Or uh, we had the Olympics here in uh, 2002. Nice. Fantastic. And I'm dialing in from uh, cold Melbourne, Australia this morning. Cold. Mate. I think cold's <laughs> a relative term. What is cold for you? <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay fine <laughs> yeah. maybe five maybe five six degrees celsius let's see i have to convert that to fahrenheit because we're idiots over here oh that is cold that is cold yeah okay i'll give you that one <laughs> mate for those that uh haven't met you before or, or don't know anything about you can you give us a little bit of that a little bit of insight into uh a little bit more about you and what is you currently do yeah, so Damon Burton, um, I started a company called SEO National in 2007. So we focus on just search engine optimization. If you're not feel, familiar with what that is, the, the short answer is that we work with clients and websites to show up higher on Google for words that they can monetize without buying ad space. So we, we build up credibility and the reputation around um, around the business and the website. Uh, me, myself, my background, other than the 12 years, I'm a father of three, been married for 13 years. Um, as of the week we're recording this is my anniversary. So I'm going to Hawaii in a couple of days. So fantastic. Um, that's you still wear that the kids. With man, they're my buddies, but I take my kids everywhere. Yeah. How old are your kids? Um, I have two boys, eight and five. And then I have a, a daughter who's the boss and she's two. <laughs> already the boss and two <laughs> that's right there yeah so mate take us back like uh how'd you how'd you get into your own business like what were you doing prior to seo national um the, the job i had most immediately before i started my own company was kind of in a similar space i i did a lot of web design and i worked it particularly in a, a, a niche space of affiliate marketing and so i did a lot of landing page design for you know, weight loss offers and government grants and how to make money online. Um, and, and before that, I, I worked just on traditional websites. And, and so I really only had a professional exposure for a little bit, um, but I had a long, I, I did it on the side for a long time. And so when, um, when I decided to make that transition from working on the side uh, to, to running, a, you know, starting a company at the time, it was just, for, for about a year or two, it was just myself, and it was just cool to be self-employed in your early 20s. Um, but when I made that transition was when I realized I was, half of my income came from my, my day job and half of my income came from my, my side clients, but 80% of my time was spent on my day job. So what I did is I, I said, okay, when I can afford to lose half of my income and quit my job, but still pay the bills, that sounds like a safe bet, you know, a safe gamble. And so when I, when I could afford to pay my, my mortgage payment and my utilities and buy food and not very much else, that was a risk that was worth taking for me. And so that was in 2007. Um, and, and it was a great risk because when I freed up so much time, it only took maybe two months for me to make up that income back because mm -hmm. I just had so much time to dedicate to, to doing what I wanted to do. So that's yeah. kind of the backstory. Yeah. Would you say that you've always been an entrepreneur? Like it sounds, it sounds like that was a very logical decision for you um, 12 years ago. Would you say that you've always been an entrepreneur? I'd say I've always been logical. I like, I like you saying that. Like a very, I've always been kind of calculated. I, I'm, not, I'm not the safe calculated guy. Like I'm okay taking risks, but I will definitely calculate the risks. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, this business, SEO National has been, it was my first business. I've since done other businesses, but this is the first one that I, and I still have it. Um, and so I've always had the entrepreneur mindset, but, um, you know, I, I didn't really take the, the jump. I, I was okay not knowing what I wanted to do. So as I was younger and then going into young adulthood and early twenties, I think what allowed me the opportunity to find success was to not stress about it. And so I, I didn't get concerned where like when I went to college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so I took some general classes and I was okay with that because in my mind, I thought, let's find out what I like to do by finding out what I don't like to do. Mm. 
that whole process was totally okay with me because I took it as a learning experience. And I think um, I see that a lot now, especially with how many opportunities there are on the internet. I think people prematurely make commitments to careers or services that they want to pursue without really even testing them to see if they, they have a personal interest or a passion and, and they just, somebody else suggests an opportunity and, and that other person found success. And so they say, I want to do that too. And that might be something that they have no interest in. So um, yeah, I think I always, I think I always knew that I would do something, but I just didn't know what that something would be at, at my early years. Hmm. It's interesting your approach. It's like by, you know, you don't necessarily know what you want to do, but you know what you don't want to do. So, you know, start to kind of investigate there. And I think that that's where, you know, I, I know myself and I've seen a lot of other people get caught up is trying to always make the, the, the right next decision mm-hmm. and that willingness not to, not to necessarily want to fail. Yeah, your approach is kind of like, it seems to me is it's like, as long as I'm moving forward, as long as I'm making a step, I'm moving forward, I'm going in a direction and I can always then make a new decision based on the information that I get when I take that first step. Would you, would you say that's, that's a fair call? Yeah, I think that's a fair comparison. I, I think there's a little bit of difference um, on one point between like failing and moving forward. So I do agree there's nothing wrong with failing, but I, I think that moving forward and strategically eliminating paths of opportunity um, helps you prevent that failure. So, you know, everybody's different. I think some people need to jump in and then win or fail. Like it's just one or the other. And that's okay if that's who you are. Um, but I also think there's another side of entrepreneurism that other that isn't as talked about as much, where it is that forward momentum and, and just kind of dip your feet in the water and get your toes wet and say, I like it or I don't. And then if you don't, then just keep going and then dip your toes in something else and, and like experiment, just be okay with experimenting. Yeah. Would you say that's a trait you've always had growing up or is that something you learned later in life? Um, probably a hybrid. I've always been very analytical. Um, a, a funny example that always comes to mind. I, I don't give this example often, but I always think about it is when I was younger, you know, before MP3s and digital media and, and you remember like CDs. <laughs> so Walkman and Walkman. yeah. So when I was in, um, you know, early years of, of junior high or high school, so I was probably 15 years old. Um, my my dad gave me or my mom gave me for christmas a a cd holder and it was like one of the really cool ones because it was big and you could put 100 cds in there instead of just 12. and so as i after i opened it i i started alphabetizing my cds so i could keep them organized and my mom laughed and she said you're alphabetizing your cds aren't you and i said yeah of course i am so so i've always been that type of organized analytical person in my mind it's like i'm going to alphabetize alphabetize these because it's going to make it easier for me to enjoy them and find what I want and put things away. And so I've always had that kind of mindset where, you know, if, if there's a benefit to creating a process out of something, then I'll usually, like as I'm doing an SEO task, if I crosses my mind that I may do it again, then I will just build a process out of it right there and document it. So then the next time it comes up, I can spend my time better and give that to my team instead of me having to go, what did I do last time and figure it out again? Yeah. 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 It, it, it's, it's a smart move. Let, let, let's talk for a second. Um, comeback story. So every entrepreneur, every business owner, every human being I've spoken to all have a comeback story, you know, something that some large challenge or adversity or something they've been through where in hindsight, they can look back and see how it's been one of the greatest le- lessons or one of the greatest, greatest blessings they've ever had. What would you say your comeback game story is? Like what's a, a challenge or adversity or something that happened to you that, that maybe nearly broke you, but you can look back now and realize it's been one of the greatest blessings to allow you to be where you're at today? Yeah, there was a, a time a couple of years ago where I had a venture capitalist company that was referred to me through a mutual contact and, and they were looking to, to build an, an, a marketing agency. And so they had these other agencies they were going to acquire, but none of those agency did, agencies did SEO. So they wanted to bring me in and combine them into this big agency. And so at the time it was cool because, um, you know, it, it seemed like it was, it was, I think the offer was like $750,000. And, um, so, so that's a decent amount of money. Um, but when I went through the process at the time I was kind of iffy. Um, I don't remember why necessarily if I was getting burned out or like 
selling had some potential interest um, mm. at the time. And, and so I went through these discussions and what I learned, uh, so I ended up backing out and I learned some good things and bad things. Um, the reason why I ended up declining is because it just, it just didn't feel right. There was something wrong in those negotiations that was off. And, and some of it, I can clearly communicate what those wrong things were. Mm. And then there's still part of it that I don't know. It was just something was wrong. Um, but what I learned became a huge value in my, the ability for my company to scale. And I can give you a, a clear example just within a year later. Um, but what I learned, so I learned that buyers want two things. And so the first thing they want is they want, a, they want a turnkey business. They want to come to you and say, we're buying the keys, give me the keys and we're going to drive off. Like they just want to go. And so you have to have documented processes. You have to have very streamlined procedures. Uh, it, it, ideally, your business can operate without you. Hmm. Uh, the second thing they want is they want to say, where are all your cells coming from? Where is that fire? Because we want to pour more fuel on it and increase that fire. So, so that was great to learn. And, mm -hmm. and out of those two things, the, the bigger of the two was how important documenting processes were. Because at the time we had processes, but half of them were on spreadsheets and half of them were on Word docs. And so they weren't consolidated. And so after that discussion, and about the same time I was listening to E-Myth Revisited. Um, yeah. And so it just was like the perfect match of that book and then that circumstance where I realized how important processes were. And so I, at that moment, I said, okay, we're going to streamline all of our processes, uh, make them very organized. So if down the road we sell, um, it's a very easy sell. Mm -hmm. And what I did at that point is for the next, it took forever. It was so painful, but it was so worth it. It took probably a year, uh, two to three hours a day, you know, twice a week on top of running the business, on top of managing employees, on top of being a dad throwing in more time to document all these processes. Um, the reason why it took so long is because I wanted to do it perfectly. I wanted mm -hmm. to recreate every single process possible manually using my own hands. And it, so I could see, do we need to change any of this stuff while I'm documenting it? Is all of this still relevant? And, and really, I never want to do this again. So if we're going to do it, let's, let's do it the right way. And the, the example of how beneficial that was is a couple months after that was done, we had a big client come to us and based on how large of a client they were, they're an inter international company. Um, I had to hire five people like tomorrow. And so I sourced the talent and if I didn't have all those processes documented, that would have been a, a horrible rollout. Mm -hmm. But I was able to, once I found the talent day one, I said, Hey, welcome to the team. Here's, the campaign you're going to be working on day two was here's access to our project management system. And day three, I said, goodbye, go do your thing. And there's mm -hmm. no way I could have done that um, without having gone through that process. And, you know, that was like a $10,000 a month client. And so it was mm -hmm. a huge opportunity to be able to take on that client without any problems at all. Yeah. Yeah. Systems and processes set you free. And it's certainly something that within, within our community uh, and the game changers, we teach our clients a lot how to do not just system and process, but, actually had a higher talent to come in and build them for you. Mm -hmm. So when you hire the staff member to come in, how do, you, how do you actually teach them to system systematize and create the process within your organization so that you can build a business that ultimately works without you and beyond you. And, right. you know, we meet a lot of clients that are like, oh, but, you know, I, I want to keep working my business. And it's like, you can just keep working your business if you choose to. But the reality is, is, is that unless you have a business that's fully functional without you, you have a job, mm -hmm. you know, and so you want to remove that. You can still work in your business, but have it set up in such a way it doesn't require you to keep operating. I want to come back to that venture capitalist experience for a second, because you're someone that's quite analytical as, as we've spoken about and makes decisions based on uh, that. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a gut feeling or an instinct or an intuition about the deal not being right in the beginning? Do you feel? Yeah. Any, like something didn't quite feel right and, and you still continue to kind of follow it through, even though something was a bit of a miss. I did. Yeah. Um, there was definitely uh uh, something, something was off. So the gentleman that made the introduction, he's a friend and he's still a good friend of mine. So it had nothing to do with him. Mm -hmm. But when we went to the meeting with this venture capitalist firm, just right off the bat, it was, it, it just felt dirty. It felt like there was a hidden agenda. And, and so there was definitely that gut feeling, but then there was also a very realistic issue that I had. And their, their proposal was, 
the sell price would be broken into thirds. So you'd get a third cash, a third stock, and a third note. And so out of that money, um, you know, 750 grand, if we divide that by three, that's 250 grand cash, which I was essentially already making. And, and that's the only guaranteed part. So why yeah. would I sell everything and all the future opportunity for what I'm already getting? Yeah. And the other two thirds were not guaranteed because yeah. what I ultimately felt like, and, and I don't know if this would have been true or not, but what I've learned and what I felt would have happened was the note would have never been paid because it's just a loan. I have, I have, you know, no collateral. I can't enforce the repayment of that. And the stock, they would have either rolled the company into another one and voided the stock or just bankrupt the company. And so it really felt like the only thing that I would have got was that 250 grand. And that was just not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting this, this conversation that um, I have with people around the difference between like that intuition intellect and, and what I often see is that our intellect only gets us so far because often we're basing decisions based on past experiences or based on the information at hand. Mm -hmm. Yet often all the information is not usually present. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is where I believe that we all have access to our heart or to our intuition or to that inner knowing if we choose to listen to it and choose to follow it. Um, and, and I think, uh, you know, many people I speak to can all, can all contest that they've always had that feeling that's come up in situations like this and some have chose to follow it and, and not go ahead with something that didn't feel right. And doors have opened up in ways they never knew possible, right. That everyone saw coming and equally too, there's, there's, there's so many other people that even though they felt that intuition or that, that inkling, uh, chose to ignore it, trust their, trust their logic and things have turned to shit. And so it's just interesting to note that you definitely felt there was, there was something dirty around it. And then obviously the more you looked into it, logically it didn't make sense either. Yeah. That was a definitive thing. That wasn't one of those like, Hey, I might have a bad feeling. That was a for sure bad feeling. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fantastic. Mate, over your past uh, experiences in business and life, what do you think is the best advice you've ever been given? Um, hmm. you know, I, I'll probably have to answer that a little bit differently than the question was intended because I don't too often, um, you know, I was on another podcast the other day and, and the question was close, but a little bit different. The question was, where do you go for inspiration? Um, and, and the answer was, I don't go anywhere. Um, and, and I said, that's good and bad. And, and so I think that answer probably partly applies to this. Um, so I don't really go a lot of places for inspiration and for that reason I don't get a lot of advice now now the reason why that's good and bad is because um, you know it's obviously bad because I may be way further than I am now ha had I surrounded myself with with a more close inner circle and I have a lot of, a lot of friends um, that have found great success but they're in different industries um, and so I could be even further, I don't know. And so that's the bad side. Now, the reason why I don't too often get involved with the opinions of other people, um, one is because I've always been very self-motivated and I don't often find myself in, in like a deep spot where I feel like I need inspiration and I need advice. I've always been very driven. And so when, when there's something that I need to, to tackle, I, don't, I, I almost never go, I don't know if I can do that. Instead, my first thought is how. And so, and then I just go and I figure it out. So um, the, other, the other reason why I don't too often get involved in other circles is I feel like, especially in the SEO world, this, this is more an SEO thing than, than business mm -hmm. in general, because I do agree that the entrepreneurial community is very supportive and, and you can openly go to other people. And more often than not, people are happy to give you advice. Um, but in the SEO community, it feels like um, there's a lot of regurgitation and, and shared uh, you know, like one person may say, Hey, I found a shiny thing. And then everyone goes, Oh, look at that shiny thing. And everyone starts talking about the same thing, mm -hmm. even though most of them have no direct experience or direct value to add. They're just repeating something that somebody else said that somebody else said that somebody else said. So mm -hmm. in the SEO community, I don't too often reach out for advice. Um, but, but in business, you know, I got, I got probably two people that I reach out to, but, um, uh, on a regular basis. Uh, but I guess if I had to answer the question, I'd say more, more experience than a direct quote from anybody is kind of what we, we touched on earlier about, you know, don't be shy to experiment and 
I'm sure other guests have said, you know, starting starts with starting. Like you just have to, you just have to go. Like if you're waiting for the perfect day to start a business or to make a move in your business, it's just never going to come. Like you just got to have that forward momentum. Yeah. Yeah. Be willing to step forwards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that being said then, like, what do you, what, what are three bits of advice you give somebody who's in business right now? Like any business, not necessarily SEO specific. What are three bits of advice you give someone who's in business right now? Maybe they're struggling, maybe they're hitting a plateau, maybe they're unsure of the next direction. Like what, what would be three bits of advice you'd share with someone else? Um, first thing I would say is, is start. So like whatever it is that you're considering, um, don't, don't overly think your path because once you start that path, it's going to change anyway. So I, first advice is just start or, or make a move or, or make a try. Um, after that, I'd say be patient. I, I think a lot of people get too caught up and once they do make that start, they say, why am I not, why am I not where that other guy is that only took six months or a year? There, there's so many success stories and, and so many, especially in the online world. Um, but usually there's a lot more to the story that you know, that, that you can mm-hmm. read into and you don't know that whole story. And then you also don't even know if the story is real. Like the, anybody mm-hmm. can put anything they want on social media. So don't compare yourself and be patient. Um, you know, most things are probably going to take longer than uh, you'd hope for. And, and then you just got to commit. Like once you find that thing, uh, like with me, once I found SEO and I said, Hey, this is my interest, like commit to it. Don't you give it enough time to, to bear fruit and figure out if it's really something that you can stick to. And, and don't get caught up in, in that first characteristic of, you know, trying it for three months or six months or however long the other guy did. And you're not as far as they are at the same time. Yeah. Uh, you know, if it's something that you're passionate about and you find some interest in, give it enough time to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I think the owner of LinkedIn said to touch on your first point, if you're not embarrassed by your first product or service launch, you launch too late. Yeah. So it's that, oh, you know, yeah. jump is why, you know, we recommend a lot to when people are systemizing, like the last thing you should systemize is deliverability of your offer. Well, not the last thing, but the first thing you should be systemizing is how to, how to, how to market and sell your product or service. Because often when you launch a business, what you're selling your product and service does change and does evolve through the journey of business. Um, the second point, yeah, like don't compare your first chapter with someone else's sixth chapter. Like you yeah. never have any understanding of, of where they've come from or what their past experience have been or you know, who's funded them or what resources they've got. Like you just don't know it, especially to, you know, don't compare yourself to someone you see on social media because often what you see is like one side of the coin. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we can't get rich collecting one side of the coins. There's always two aspects of everything. And so although you see the business might be killing it, their relationship might be falling apart. And so be wary of, of who you're comparing yourself to. Yeah. And you don't know that, you know, even if their business is doing a, a high gross um, you know, high gross numbers, they might be saying they're doing millions, but they might be making pennies. You know, you don't know what their actual take home is. And not, not only do you not know what, what the business profit is, you don't know what their personal profit is after the business has paid the bills either. So I mean, there's yeah. so many layers to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And, and often to what we do as human beings or what we do do as human beings is we only ever filter things through the experience of our own filters mm-hmm. and you know, like if we have these filters set up that have these negative connotations around money, we'll have filtered in other people's experiences based on that to either put ourselves down or lift ourselves up. And so I think it's a very wise thing you share there is don't compare essentially your first chapter to someone else's fifth chapter. And the last thing too, I remember, I think it was, I don't know, it was Ray Crocker from McDonald's or someone like that. They said, uh, you know, we were an overnight success 15 years in the making. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, like the same thing. Mm-hmm. Any anyone that I've met that has made money super super quickly has equally got a story around how they lost it super super quickly. You know, like to grow a a profitable, sustainable business and lifestyle takes time. It takes consistency, and I think that if you're an entrepreneur, business owner right now, and you're constantly noticing the next shiny thing or launching the next product or service because you you think or perceive that it's the next big thing, you're not going to get the results you want as opposed to picking something and sticking with it and seeing it through to to completion. What, and a lot of times when these businesses have these amazing success stories on their first try, once they exit that business or sell it and try their next thing, they got 20 failures in a row. Like they, there's a lot of luck on some of these super successes. And so like, you can't, you can't feel like your skill is comparable to somebody's luck. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love that. Love that. Mate, anything else to share with the, uh, with the viewers and listeners today? Oh, let's see. Um, I'm not a big sales pitchy guy, so let me, let me think what I got. Um, I got a book coming out later this year. Um, I'll be offering some free downloads, so um, you can kind of keep in tune to that. Uh, that'll, I'll probably launch that on ways2rank.com. Um, I got a free download. It's a nine page PDF on, um, you know, if you're, whether you're just starting SEO or even if you're somewhat experienced, you can go to seonational.com slash free. It's totally yeah. free. I don't even ask for your email. It's just right there. Um, and that'll kind of, no matter your experience, you should be able to pick up some, some good information from there. Um, hopefully that helps you out. And, um, you got a podcast too. I do. Yeah. Um, that's how we met Barry. We're, we're switching sides of the mic. So, yeah. um, I have a podcast called learning from others.com where I, I kind of focus on bringing guests that have some success stories, but they're also willing to talk about, you know, the, the, those 10 year, 15 year Ray Kroc stories, like all the hard stuff that, that it took to get there too. Yeah. So if people want to find your podcast. How do they find that? Uh, learning from others.com. Fantastic. Learning from others.com. David, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate, uh, having a call in from Utah this morning. Thank you so much for all you had to share. Hopefully the guys have got some value. Uh, if you have, hit us a like, uh, comment, or please share it around. I think too, if you're a business owner right now and you're looking for ways to set up your systems and processes to scale and have a business that works with or beyond you, please click on the link below too and book in a free scale session with one of my team. Thanks so much for your time today, dude. You bet. Thanks for a good chatting with you again. Thanks, mate. Bye-bye. Share it around. I think too, if you're a business owner right now and you're looking for ways to set up your systems and processes to scale and have a business that works with or beyond you, please click on the link below to and book in a free scale session with one of my team. Thanks so much for your time today, dude. You bet. Thanks for a good chatting with you again. Thanks, mate. Bye-bye. If you're in a position that many of our clients were before joining us, which is that your business is controlling you rather than you controlling your business, we would love to have a chat to you to see whether or not we might be the right fit to partner with you to help you grow and succeed in business. Over the past eight years, we've helped hundreds of business owners around the world to grow, scale and succeed in business. Uh, many of our clients report we've helped them to triple their profits and double their time off in 12 months or less. If you jump onto YouTube and notice the hundreds of testimonies, you'd see that this is a common theme amongst them. If you're a business owner that's generating more than $300,000 a year in annual revenue, uh, whether it's 500 million, 5 million, even $10 million a year, and you're looking to take your business and your life to the next level, we might be able to help. If you're noticing that your business is lacking structure, maybe systems or processes, maybe you're not quite attracting enough or, or the right type of quality leads, making enough sales, or maybe you've been having issues finding, hiring, retaining, and training the right team members, we could be a fit for you. Ultimately, we believe that we never have business problems, we have personal problems that are expressed through our business. And a lot of the work we do is with you as a business owner, helping you to constantly upgrade the way that you see life, the way that you make decisions, and the way that you help construct a profitable and purpose-driven business. In order for us to do that though, you need to book in a quick, a uh, 15 minute application call with one of our scaling specialists here at The Game Changers. Through the 15 minute call, we're gonna ask you a bunch of questions to see if or how we might better help you. If we can't help you, we'll let you know politely and do our best to point in the direction of someone that can. However, if we can help you, we'll look at booking you an, a one hour game plan session where we're gonna dive a lot deeper into where you and your business are at right now, where it is that you want to go in the next three, five, and 10 years time, and what are the potential roadblocks or challenges or even opportunities that are along the journey in order for you to get there uh, faster. If you're really feeling that it's time for you to experience the love and the joy of running a business again, if you're really wanting to experience a business that does actually operate without you while still producing profit, uh, we may very well be the right fit. So book in a 15 minute call, we can have a chat and uh, see where we go from there. My name is Barry Baduti and uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully we get a chance to talk soon.